Sometimes when working on a program or game, you want your items to have descriptions, but you don't have enough time to write one for every single item. I propose a way to describe each item automatically through string builders. First of all, we'll need an item class to describe. It's just a normal item class with a name, a count, and some type of flavor. Because, you know, all things have flavor. To make the string builder give us a description on these items, the properties have to be public. Just for easier creation, let's add a constructor. With the basics of items out of the way, we'll need a method to create the descriptions for us. I prefer putting these in their own class. I just called the class procedural item descriptor. We'll make a new method returning a string builder. It will be called build. It'll take in the items we give it. To use a string builder, we need to make a new instance of string builder. If you don't know the basic syntax of a string builder, you can watch my nano tutorial. I'll leave a link to it in the description and a comment. So if there are any cookies in the item, then we want to return the number of cookies. And if we don't have any, we want it to say no instead of zero. You have shouldn't be placed inside the if statement. I'll just put it above the if. No. Okay, so flavor next. To, the way to check if a string has content is to check if its length is bigger than zero. So if the flavor string is not empty, we'll add it to the string builder. Same goes for the name, although the words will be stuck together. We should add a space between them. If we have more than one item, I think it should be plural. That's simple. Now that the basic structure of our string builder is complete, we should return it. Also, since we're using the non-append line variant of the two appends, let's just end it with a new line character. Back in the program's main method, we should make a few items. I'll have a cookie with four items, and they'll be chocolate chip. Now for one computer and a test... Oh, wait a minute. These variables have bad names. We should call them cookie, computer, and Tesla. I hear the Cybertruck is popular. Let's say I have no Tesla Cybertrucks. Okay, let's get the cookies string builder and print it to the console. Ah, you see, we forgot to space out the item count from its name. Oopsies, let's fix that real quick. But sometimes it's a little hard telling the descriptor to build a description for each item. I have an idea. Back in the item class, we want to override its toString method, returning the descriptor's method instead. Oh, you can't see methods from classes unless they are public. It sees the method now, but I see an error. Oh! It's trying to convert the string builder to a string. Okay, so at the end, I will just run the string builder's toString method. Ha, ah, it's a bit of toString inception. Now that the cookie's description can be retrieved by calling its toString method, we can go back to the main method and try them out on the other two objects. Okay, I have one computer, correct. Although, that's a weird double space. Okay, let's try Tesla. The Cybertruck is not the flavor, it's Tesla. I fixed it. Let's make a list of items to display them all at the same time. For each item in the list, we will display their descriptions. That's nice, although a little bit annoying. What's going on with these split lines? Oh! Oh, since we are supplying the next line character in the string builder, we need to make the console write line method into a console write method instead. Okay, that looks a lot nicer. It's a little gross to look at, so we can do the same thing we're doing with individual items to the whole list. To make the build item description method more correct, let's rename it to build item in the descriptors class. I'll just copy the code from build item and paste it into a new method I will call build items. 
Instead of taking in a single item, we'll take in a list of items. Okay, I'm going to split the code up into its repeating and non-repeating sections. I want to note there should be a way you can make the re code repeat less. It's up to you how to figure out how to do that. Let's run the build items method on the list and see what it gives us. Okay, that looks nice. A bit squished together. Could quickly add a comma to the end of each item. That's better, but the comma at the end should be a period instead. The only way to do item specific placement code is to use a for loop instead of what we're currently doing. Let's convert the for each loop into a for loop. Okay, if this item is not the last in the loop, we'll display a comma. Otherwise, let's display a period. Simple work. This could actually be displayed a lot nicer here using the question mark colon operator. Its syntax is simple. Inside the append methods brackets, we'll have the if statements data followed by a question mark where the first value comes in. That's just a string with a comma in it. The second item, a string with a period in it, comes after a colon. Heh, <laughs> they're still stuck together. We need to fix that annoying double space problem. Let's put brackets on the string length if statements and put the added spaces inside. Super nice. Okay, I forgot to add a space after the comma and period. It's a quick fix. This is almost the correct sentence. Real sentences would say and. We're already checking for the end, so let's just move the if statement bool thing to the top and name the variable is last item. So if it is the last item, let's add and to our string builder. Okay, that code where the comma and period is, we can just add the is last item bool with a not operator at the beginning. Okay, I think it's working perfectly. Let's take a look at the before and the after. That's so clean. This way, the item's description can be used for itself, and the list of items description could be used for an inventory holding those items. Did this help you understand the practical use of a string builder? I would love to hear your feedback on this style of tutorial in the comments. Do you like it? Thanks for watching. Thank you.